Selections by B. P. Schillaber from Little Masterpieces of American Wit and Humor, recorded for LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rosie. Selections by B. P. Schillaber from Little Masterpieces of American Wit and Humor. Fancy diseases. Diseases is very various," said Mrs. Partington as she returned from a street door conversation with Doctor Bolus. "The doctor tells me that poor old Mrs. Hayes has got two buckles on her lungs. It is dreadful to think of. I declare, the diseases is so various. One way we hear of people's dying of hermitage of the lungs; another way of the brown creatures. Here they tell us of the elementary canal being out of order, and there about tonsors of the throat." Here we hear of neurology in the head, there of an embargo. One side of us we hear of men being killed by getting a pound of tough beef in the sarcophagus, and there another kills himself by discovering his jocular vein. Things change so that I declare I don't know how to subscribe for any diseases nowadays. New names and new nostrils take the place of the old, and I might as well throw my old herb bag away. Fifteen minutes afterward, Isaac had that herb bag for a target, and broke three squares of glass in the cellar window in trying to hit it, before the old lady knew what he was about. She didn't mean exactly what she said. Bailed out. So our neighbor, Mr. Guzzle, has been arranged at the bar for drunkardess, said Mrs. Partington. And she sighed as she thought of his wife and children at home, with the cold weather close at hand, and the searching winds intruding through the chinks in the windows, and waving the tattered curtain like a banner, where the little ones stood shivering by the faint embers. God forgive him, and pity them, said she, in a tone of voice tremulous with emotion. But he was bailed out, said Ike, who had devoured the residue of the paragraph, and laid the paper in a pan of liquid custard that the dame was preparing for Thanksgiving, and sat swinging the oven door to and fro as if to fan the fire that crackled and blazed within. Bailed out, was he, said she. Well, I should think it would have been cheaper to have pumped him out, for when our cellar was filled, arter the city fathers had degraded the street, we had to have it pumped out, though there wasn't half so much in it as he has swilled down. She paused and reached up on the high shelves of the closet for her pie plates, while Ike busied himself in tasting the various preparations. The dame thought that was the smallest quart of sweet cider she had ever seen. Seeking a Comet It was with an anxious feeling that Mrs. Partington, having smoked her specks, directed her gaze toward the western sky in quest of the tailless comet of 1850. "'I can't see it,' said she, and a shade of vexation was perceptible in the tone of her voice. "'I don't think much of this explanatory system,' continued she, "'that they praise so, where the stars are mixed up so that I can't tell Jew Peter from Satan, "'nor the consternation of the great bear from the man in the moon. "'Tis all dark to me. I don't believe there is any comet at all. "'Who ever heard of a comet without a tail, I should like to know? "'It isn't natural. But the printers will make a tail for it fast enough, "'for they are always getting up comical stories.' With a complaint about the falling dew, and a slight murmur of disappointment, the dame disappeared behind a deal door like the moon behind a cloud. Going to California "'Dear me!' exclaimed Mrs. Partington sorrowfully. "'How much a man will bear, and how far he will go to get the soldered dross, as Parson Martin called it, when he refused the beggar a sixpence for fear it might lead him into extravagance. Everybody is going to California, and chagrin arter gold.' Cousin Jones and the three Smiths have gone, and Mr. Chip, the carpenter, has left his wife and seven children and a blessed old mother-in-law to seek his fortune too. This is the strangest yet, and I don't see how he could have done it. It looks so ungrateful to treat heaven's blessings so lightly. But there, we are told that the love of money is the root of all evil, and how true it is. For they are now rooting arter it like pigs arter ground nuts. Why, it is a perfect money mania among everybody." and she shook her head doubtingly as she pensively watched a small mug of cider with an apple in it simmering by the winter fire. She was somewhat fond of a drink made in this way. Mrs. Partington in Court I took my knitting work and went up into the gallery, said Mrs. Partington, the day after visiting one of the city courts. I went up into the gallery, and after I had adjusted my specs, I looked down into the room, but I couldn't see any courting going on. An old gentleman seemed to be asking a good many impertinent questions, just like some old folks, and people were sitting around making minutes of the conversation. I don't see how they made out what was said, for they all told different stories. How much easier it would be to get along if they were all made to tell the same story. 
What a sight of trouble it would save the lawyers. The case, as they call it, was given to the jury, but I couldn't see it, and a gentleman with a long pole was made to swear that he'd keep an eye on them, and see that they didn't run away with it. By and by, in they came again, and they said somebody was guilty of something, who had just said he was innocent, and didn't know nothing about it no more than the little baby that had never subsistence. I come away soon afterward, but I couldn't help thinking how trying it must be to sit there all day, shut out from the blessed air. A propos of Superintendent Andrew's reported objection to the singing of the recessional in the Chicago public schools, on the ground that the atheists might be offended, the Chicago Post says, for the benefit of our skittish friends, the atheists, and in order not to deprive the public school children of the literary beauties of certain poems that may be classed by Dr. Andrews as hymns, we venture to suggest this compromise, taking a few lines in illustration from our national anthem. Our Father's God, assuming purely for the sake of argument that there is a God, to thee, author of liberty, with apologies to our friends, the atheists, to thee I sing, but we needn't mean it, you know. Long may our land be bright, with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, remember, this is purely hypothetical, great God, again assuming that there is a God, our King, simply an allegorical phrase, and not intended offensively to any taxpayer. End of Selections by B. P. Shillaber Recording by Rosie